when it comes to building a premium brand and brand experience, everyone is in the shadow of Apple. Apple have really shown how to get it right in terms of that mastery of the brand experience, which means that they have great control over their price points. Effectively, that gives them enormous power over distribution. Even the largest electronics distributors in Japan, such as Yodabashi, Yamada and whatnot, cannot beat Apple down on price. They pretty much have to accept Taka, the standard price, and at best, the uh, retailers can give up a little bit of their own distribution margin through points, for example. And of course, Apple increasingly drives people through their own stores and indeed through the online experience. A significant proportion of Apple product is actually sold online. If you want something customized, they don't even have stock here. So the store is more about support and more about the brand experience. But the uh, success of Apple goes ultimately to these fundamental questions of the user experience, the quality of the experience, and more and more this combination of the hard and the soft. And we've talked about bundling as a strategy, a pricing strategy. What we see very effectively here is when you're selling a computer, by bundling in software, and particularly getting that bundle very tight, very nicely packaged in a seamless way, is increasing the value proposition. If it increases the value proposition, of course, it increases the preparedness of, of customers to pay a higher price. Price sensitivity with the buyers of Apple products to a large degree is the sensitivity to price within the range of Apple product itself. Once you've actually signed up for the Apple ecosystem, once you've got iCloud, once you're using a range of those apps which so seamlessly interface, then to a degree you are locked in but it's like golden handcuffs. You're locked in through a prominent, promising value proposition that's understood by large numbers of people as a good customer experience and therefore people are prepared to pay the premium and to, in some sense, exclude themselves from alternatives and cheaper alternatives through embracing the ecosystem that is Apple. Of course, Apple also makes the customer experience nice through things like the materiality of the store, the glass, the associated transparency, and whatnot. But they very tightly control all aspects of the customer interface, I think, as we have experienced. Clearly, most companies out there, particularly in things like consumer electronics, but in a whole range of fields, look to Apple to try and emulate it, to try and learn, earn lessons from this, not least because of the great strength it gives Apple in terms of its pricing. It can escape the typical post-war Japanese consumer electronics and general consumer uh, goods competitive dynamic of price down, cost down, price erosion. They were able to actually defend a price point and Part of that is continuous process of product innovation so that they can justify to consumers locking themselves into the Apple ecosystem and getting value uh, nonetheless from a higher price than prevails from all the potential rival products in the, in the market, whether it's phones, whether it's laptops or whatever.